Hello everyone, my name is Hal Silayan and I'd like to welcome you to my X4 Foundations Piracy Guide. One important thing to note is that while most of the information I'll share today is confirmed to work, other concepts may only be theoretical because testing it all takes a very long time and I'd like to finish the video this year. Today we're going to talk about multiple subjects that may not appear to be related to combat and piracy, but most of this game's mechanics are intertwined and you can't talk about one thing and not about the others or else you'd have an incomplete mess. Because I discussed the entire subject of piracy, you'll hear me repeat a lot of stuff stated in my initial ship capture tutorial, as well as the boarding demonstration video I've posted some time ago. So let us start by talking about the prerequisites, what you will need before you get started. First of all, a ship. Now you may think to yourself, but I already have a ship. No you don't. But I started the game with one. No you didn't. That is not a ship. That's an empty husk with limited potential. What you need is a real ship. Now don't misunderstand me, there's nothing wrong with a starter ship, but its combat capabilities are, as I've already said, limited. Granted, you can use it to get started by looking for jobs that may ask you to remove a minefield or repair a satellite or some other menial task. You'll want to do these missions to get yourself some early game money, as well as increase the relations with a faction of your choice. Because I want to fly Argon ships, I've chosen to do jobs for the Argon Federation, to be promoted within their ranks and obtain access to the Eclipse Vanguard. You can pick whichever faction you'd like, you don't need to follow in my footsteps. By the way, you can also increase your relations with any faction, including those that hate you, by flying around their stations and looking for criminal mass traffic. As you shoot these ships down, you'll receive a message thanking you for the help. Being promoted also allows you to buy top-of-the-line weapon systems. So let's talk about how I fitted my combat vessel so you can form an idea. Without going into too many details, I've equipped my Eclipse with the best shields and software available for obvious reasons, and I added combat thrusters to better strafe away from enemy fire. I also chose Combat Engines Mark III because travel engines accelerate too slowly and they rapidly deplete my shields when I use the boost. As for weapons, I have equipped two bolt repeaters in Group 1 for hull destruction, an ion blaster in Group 2 to obliterate shields while minimizing the hull damage, and I also equipped a guided missile launcher filled with heat seeker missiles for when I need things to go boom. If you've got money to spare, you might also want to invest into a cheap courier ship. The couriers are S-class spacecraft with a sizable cargo hold and a decent capacity for crew members. But this ship is optional at this stage, so don't worry about it. Now you'll also need to hire a crew. So go to any station, land your ship and as you walk around you'll see some people with this icon above their heads. Then you simply talk to them and select this option, you right click your combat ship, select it, choose the position of Marine and then you finalize the hiring process. If you're using the Eclipse, repeat this process two more times. You used to be able to hire skilled crewmen from other capital ships but that's been patched and now you're stuck with these simpletons. Don't worry. They'll get better at their job the more they do it. Or perhaps at one point you'll be able to use these seminars to train them. But for now that doesn't seem to be the case. Once you got a good ship and a crew, you can get some combat practice by shooting Xenon ships. Doing so can be rewarding in its own right, allowing you to loot expensive items or tech components from the Xenon wrecks. Before you get started in piracy, you're going to have one last thing to do, and that is picking a faction to brutalize. In previous X games, you could just attack pirates, steal their loot, capture their ships and board their capitals with no consequences. You did that, everybody loved you for it. But in X4, you start out with everybody being neutral towards you, each faction minding its own business. So no more generic pirates which everybody universally hates, you're going to have to make enemies with one of the present factions. I personally took a look at each faction to determine its number of enemies and since I wanted the Teladi Company and Argon Federation on my side, I decided to look for someone they both hate. And that faction is the Holy Order of the Pontifex, which by the way is one of the most hated factions in these parts for reasons I won't try to determine. I'll just jump on the bandwagon and perform acts of piracy against them because it is profitable. One other such hated faction is the Scale Plate Pact which may actually be the pirates of this game, but they're also the only faction with black market merchants, so I'll try to be on friendly terms with them. Which is why HOP was chosen to be the unfortunate receivers of my aggression. Because I chose this particular faction, I will refer to them as the targets of my operations. If you've chosen someone else to prey upon, replace the Holy Order with their faction. One final thing you need to know is how standing is lost. 
Basically, when you attack someone, he'll temporarily get flagged as an enemy, and if the sector security takes offense on behalf of that someone, they also get a temporary enemy flag. Because it's temporary, the enemy status eventually disappears and your crimes will be forgotten if you simply disengage and run away. But if you keep fighting and you destroy that someone and the system security ships, you quickly lose standing with their faction. And once you reach minus 10, this faction becomes permanently flagged as your enemy and this can either be a good or a bad thing depending on your perspective and how brutal you choose to be. In a way, seeing red ships in sectors that may consider them enemies makes it easier for you to single them out and attack them, but if you'd like an abundance of ships to prey upon, perhaps it's better to do what I do and keep your relations with that faction neutral. And if it ever goes below minus 10, hurry up and mend those relations by shooting criminal scum or taking missions for that faction. And if you prefer stealing, it's best to avoid killing altogether. Then again, perhaps you really like explosions, in which case you will find cargo piracy to be very enjoyable. Basically, this form of piracy focuses on destroying ships and collecting the loot from their wrecks. Wrecked ships can drop two types of loot, inventory items which appear in these small boxes and can be collected with any ship, and actual cargo containers which can be very heavy and they can only be picked up by a transporter ship. This is why you might find the courier a useful addition to your fleet. You may also steal trade goods by telling the captain of a transporter to drop his cargo, at which point you can order your courier to pick it up. But more often than not, cargo piracy is simply a byproduct of a failed ship capture attempt. If you fire more bullets than the ship in front of you can handle, then instead of a nice ship that you can claim, you'll be rewarded instead with some lousy cargo containers, as a reminder of your failure. But if you're the type of person who has no patience for ship capture and you opt for cargo piracy, I have noticed that destroying mining ships can drop a lot of spacefly eggs, an illegal inventory item which can be crafted into the delicacy known as spacefly caviar, worth 1 million credits to station traders. This caviar is sometimes required to complete the secret mission named a lucrative opportunity which will grant you access to a black marketeer belonging to one of the independent factions. To find such missions, pay attention to this specific sound when you fly near a station. Then open your scan mode and get real close to the source of the static and decrypt the signal. Sometimes you can even find blueprints for station modules by doing this, which is pretty neat. Anyway, once you pick up cargo, you can sell it to any station that buys it. But if you're not afraid of hard work, you can always try to steal the ships of your targets. So, let's explain ship capture again in even greater detail. To put it simply, you shoot at someone hard enough, he might get scared and leave the ship behind. Then you can claim it, patch the bullet holes and sell it for a decent price. But things aren't as simple, which is why I will explain my ship capture method step by step. The first thing I do is look for ships with the HOP tag. Once I identify a suitable ship that can be captured, such as a fighter or a transporter, the first step is to get within one kilometer. I then activate my scan mode and inspect it to take a look at the crew, and once you scan a ship you can even take a look at the stats of each crewman, easily determining his skills such as piloting, engineering or morale. And once you find out about the crew, it's good to know that the higher their morale, the harder it will be for you to convince them all to leave the ship in your care. Now in my initial observations, I noticed that trade ships are harder to capture because they're more stubborn than the fighter ships. But that happens only because trade ships can have a much bigger crew with a significantly higher morale than the standard fighter. Because it's harder to capture, we'll choose a transporter as an example. So anyway, now that you can see the crew down here, it is time to start the attack. Use the Ion Blaster to obliterate the shields of your target, then switch to your repeaters and give it a nice healthy salvo to take the hull to around 70%. Once you do this, check the number of crewmen aboard the ship. If some of them run away, then you'll 100% capture the ship. Keep firing your repeaters and see if the numbers drop any further. If they do, then the ship will be yours before its hull reaches about 10%, but it's not always that easy. Other times the cowards will leave after the first salvo, while the mentally tough crew members with high morale will stay behind and refuse to leave. If this is the case, you gotta amp up your persuasion attempt by switching to your ion blaster and hammering that ship until its hull reaches 1%. If they still don't leave, then you gotta let the shields regenerate. But the ship may reactivate its travel mode before that happens, so you're gonna have to chase it. 
If it's too fast for you, activate Guidance and keep chasing. Then, when the shields are above 30%, it's time to use the Iron Blaster once more and take them back to 0%, because doing so can severely damage the morale of even the toughest of crews. If you notice more crewmen leave as the shields drop, repeat this process until the ship is yours. Apparently shields going to 0% is a lot scarier than seeing your ship fall apart. You may also incessantly try to calm the ship and convince the captain to surrender and this can work from time to time, but it's best if you let your weapons do the talking. With enough patience, the captain is eventually going to bail and the ship will be abandoned and you will then need to claim it and add it to your collection. There are two primary ways of claiming such an abandoned ship. The first is to get within 50 meters and send one of your marines to claim it in your name. If you forgot to hire marines, then you have to use the second method which requires you to go for a spacewalk, activate your scanner and look for a signal which makes the same static noise as the data leaks aboard stations. Once you find the signal, you carefully approach and decrypt it, and once you do, the ship is yours. But because it has no captain, it'll stay there until someone goes into the captain's seat and flies it to the nearest station. Once aboard the station, find the cheapest crewman you can and hire him to be the captain of your newly acquired ship. There's also a third method, but this one requires you to have another ship, preferably the courier. If the ship is present in the same sector in which you're doing your misdeeds, you'll receive this message from its captain. If the courier also has marines on board, you can select this option and the courier will approach the abandoned ship and send one of its marines to claim the ship remotely. Now let's go back in time a few minutes. When the pilot bails and the ship is abandoned, sometimes it can be in a critical condition, in which case you should use your repair laser to perform field repairs and get it back to at least 10%, you know, to prevent it from falling apart when you or your marines try to fly it. Or you could repair it to 100% and immediately fly it yourself to the nearest shipyard and sell it directly. But I don't recommend you do that yet. We'll talk more about selling your loot later on in the video. Anyway, as soon as the ship is claimed, I give it the order to fly into friendly territory and dock somewhere until I cap enough ships. Once I do, I give them all the order to fly to the same place and then go there to repair all of them myself. I usually do this semi-passively, putting something heavy on my keyboard to keep the repair laser running. And I check in every once in a while to make sure I don't repair a ship that's at 100%. And I obviously quick save after each repair. Once all the ships are fully repaired, you can prepare to sell them. I'll tell you how in the sell a loot section of this video. While we're still on the subject of ship repair, let us roll back a clip from when we were capturing. Do you see this? This ship's hull is passively getting repaired by its service crewmen with high engineering skills. So I tried to get myself such crewmen and put them aboard my captured ships and then I had those ships fly through space and see if they get passively repaired but so far I haven't had success. Perhaps this is a bug that's going to be fixed in which case using engineers will be a good method to passively repair the ships that you capture. If this will ever work don't forget to retrieve these crewmen once their job is done. But for now you're just gonna have to rely on your repair laser. Or who knows, maybe mods. Anyway, capturing ships and selling them like that can be quite profitable and not too risky. But if you want the big bucks, well kid, you gotta start boarding. That's where the real money is. For boarding you will need to prepare a few ships beforehand. The Magpie Courier will make a good marine transport to ferry your marines from your boarded vessel back to your main attack ship when you actually successfully do board your first capital. But we ain't quite there yet. Theoretically, you can perform boarding with any ship. Your Eclipse that can carry three marines can start a boarding operation on its own. But getting past defenses of your target and resisting a capital ship's firepower without going kaboom and having your three marines survive the encounter with the enemy troops? Well, let me give it to you straight. Your little fighter ain't gonna cut it. This is why the most important ship you need at this stage of piracy is a frigate. Depending on which faction you're allied with, you can either use the Osprey or the Gorgon or the ship I'm using, the Cerberus. You can use whichever loadout you want, but here's mine. Combat engines, obviously, beam or bolt turrets, one plasma cannon as a primary weapon and a guided missile launcher as a secondary. Then you will obviously need marines, as many as you can carry. There's probably 14 or 15 recruits, so they will have to do. Before you start boarding, also pay attention to this number right here, which indicates the boarding strength of your soldiers. 
What about your magpie courier? What does it do? Well, it could carry more marines to be used as reinforcements, but boarding with multiple ships seems to be bugged right now, so we'll have to wait for a patch. For now, the magpie will simply have to carry some crewmen to be used after the capital ship is yours. Try to find someone with at least one star in captain skills, try to find some people with at least one star in service crew skills, and you can also find someone cheap to pilot the ship when you're gonna sell it. After you get the relief crew aboard your courier, you're going to want to tell its captain to dock on the Cerberus and wait there. Also, make sure this ship is not part of your squad, because we're trying to do boarding with just one ship. The first order of business is to look for HOP capital ships. From my extensive personal experience, you will only find such capitals in their home systems. So that's where we're going. Make sure your relations with this faction are at least zero, if not higher, because this ultimate act of piracy will absolutely decimate your standings. Basically, if you attack small ships and they bail, as long as you don't kill anyone or you don't destroy anything, your relations will stay the same. But if you destroy a ship or a laser tower or hell, even a drone, this standing will decrease because destroying these counts as unauthorized kills. And each subsystem you destroy as part of the boarding process counts as an unauthorized kill so you can be sure your relations can very well go to minus 10 as you do this. One final warning! When you attack some of these capitals, you run the risk of attracting the attention of the entire system security force. And if you do, I hope you can run. But let's assume that won't happen. Let us assume that we can board a ship without any interruptions. The first step is to look for a suitable ship. I'm personally going after freighters. Then, you gotta get close and activate your scan mode and inspect its crew, just like we did when we captured the smaller ships. Sometimes the crew can be in the 30s, in which case you gotta determine if they can actually fight, so what you do is you view the detailed information about the ship and take a look here at their boarding resistance. If most people on board are service crew and not marines, those can't really put up a fight. If your boarding strength is higher than their resistance, then you can green light your target. At this point you're going to want to quick save your game, especially if you have no experience in boarding. Alright, now that you got some information about your target, it is time to begin. Right click the cap ship and initialize the boarding operation. From the interface you're going to want to select all of your marines and plan out each stage of the operation. My personal outline for planning a boarding op is this. Ship behavior, target weapons, launch pods at very weak combat effectiveness, start breaching at medium hull strength. Then I press start and my marines get ready to fight, but they won't launch until the parameters I've set are met. I will explain the reasoning for each of these choices as we begin the operation. Now we gotta lay the groundwork for stage 1, the approach. Since I've chosen to destroy a ship's combat effectiveness, the first of my attacks target its weapon systems. You can select these tours by either clicking them or you can cycle through them with a home button. For the sake of your own ship, destroy any tracking turrets you see, as these can launch homing missiles that deal heavy damage. You can either use your slow moving plasma cannon, or you can launch heat seeking missiles to wipe out these subsystems en masse. The choice is yours. As soon as these turrets are destroyed, your marines launch from your ship and fly their boarding pods towards their target, and if the ship has no defenses or wingmen to shoot these pods down, your marines will make contact and await for the parameter of stage 2. One problem you can face during the first stage is the inability of your marines to approach the target if its engines are running and it's flying at full speed. You quick saved, so if this is a problem, you can also destroy the engines at some point to pin the ship down. Now to phase 2, infiltration. This is where your marines start cutting through the hull and prepare to stage their assault. Since I chose medium hull strength, I will have to damage the ship to 50% structure. Once I do, my marines will each report their status, that they're breaching the target's hull. Because there's engineers on board the cap ship, they will do their best to repair the hull, so let me give you a fact that I didn't know until recently. The higher the target's hull percentage, the easier will it be for its crew to defend it. When the ship's repaired and the shields restore, the defending crew can create lockdowns which slow down and separate your marines. And they can also use onboard security systems that will simply kill off your attacking crew. I once boarded a ship and my boarding strength was at 150, 
while my enemy's resistance was about 100. Because the numbers were on my side, I decided I'll let the ship repair itself a little so I won't have to do it all by myself. As the hull percentage got higher and higher, my marines started reporting lockdowns and difficulty engaging the enemy. And eventually, they got wiped out. In my second attempt, I tried keeping the target below 50% hull. And I've noticed my marines easily won that time, with minimum casualties. Anyway, once your marines complete the infiltration stage, they will begin their assault on the target's crew, this being the third and final phase. As they fight the defenders, your job is to simply keep the hull below 50% to ensure that your enemies don't gain access to their ship's onboard defense capabilities. And you might also want to cycle through your enemy's subsystems and target any weapons that might have been repaired by the drones to prevent taking damage. As for these repaired drones, leave them be. They'll repair the ship once it's yours. As you're helping marines in stage 3, you're going to do one final thing to avoid your target going boom. Either change the targeting parameters of your turrets, or turn them off completely to prevent them from firing on your future ship. If you've done everything correctly, your marines will cheer and transfer the ownership of the capital to you. And I guess congratulations are in order since you've now performed your first successful boarding operation. Hopefully the police didn't intervene to make things hard for you. But what if I told you that boarding a ship is the easy part? You wouldn't believe me, would you? But it's true. The hard part is getting the ship repaired and moving it out of there, especially if you became an enemy of the faction you stole it from. If you didn't, you can leave the ship there to be slowly repaired by the drones. While your new ship is undergoing repairs, we need to prepare it to be sold. Earlier I told you to hire some skilled individuals on your courier, so you're going to get this courier aboard your new capital and order the skilled pilot to become captain of your freighter, and appoint the rest as service crew. Then, comb each of your marines individually and get them aboard your magpie, which you will then fly back to the Cerberus, and then repeat the process of telling your marines to return where they belong, ready for the next boarding op. You might have to do this several times, depending on how many of your marines survived. By the way, the more boarding attempts your marines survive, the better they get at their job, eventually becoming veterans and even elites. These lads are obviously stronger than recruits, heavily increasing your boarding strength. Take care of your veterans, and if you see any of them perish during a boarding attempt, do yourself a favor and reload. Now, back to your prize. You assigned the pilot and service crew aboard your new ship, and you got your surviving marines back to the frigate. Now, if you're not under attack, you can just leave the ship there to be repaired and do something else in the meantime, like mending your relations with those you stole the ship from. But perhaps you want to speed up the repairs of your new acquisition? For that reason, I carry 5 repair drones on my Cerberus, which will be used momentarily. First, I need to take control of the new cap ship myself and order my Cerberus to transfer wares with a freighter. Because there's no cargo drones on this freighter, I use the container magnet to pull those drones into my ship. At which point, I give control back to the relief captain. Then, the drones start repairing destroyed modules. Like the engines and the turrets you obliterated when you were boarding the thing. Once a module is back online and you can click on it, you can even contribute yourself to speed up the repairs. Get out in your spacesuit and use your tiny laser to fix every module yourself and also repair the hull to 100%. Because service crewmen refuse to do their jobs, you gotta use the same mentality as Thanos. Fine, I'll do it myself. Once you fix the ship and its modules to 100%, let the repaired drones land so you can sell the ship and get paid. But before we talk about how to get paid, let me give you the quick rundown of how to use multiple ships for boarding to increase the number of marines. Let's assume your support ship is a magpie courier filled with 7 recruit marines. What you do to use those marines is simply come the pilot and tell him to join your squad. Then, the magpie is considered a subordinate of your frigate and its marines become available to be used in the boarding op. Then, you do everything just as when you use the single ship. Still, for beginners it's best if you learn to board with only the frigate. When you get a lot of money, you can even invest in a destroyer, which can carry a lot more marines. Alright, now it's finally time to talk about how to sell your captured and boarded ships. You can of course select the ship you want to sell and look around the map for a shipyard, wharf or equipment dock. Then, with a ship selected, you right-click the station of your choice and select the sell option and take a look at the price. 
Different stations pay different prices, with wharfs paying more for small ships and shipyards paying more for capitals. So compare the prices and then set guidance to the station that pays the most. Do not sell the ship yet. For some reason you get paid more if you first sell its equipment and then the chassis. So either fly to that station yourself or give your captain the order to do it and when the ship is there, select the upgrade slash repair option. Then if you have the option to click on this icon to just sell the equipment, you should do it. Otherwise just choose the cheapest alternative for your equipment so you can sell the expensive bits and get paid more. After your ship's modules get deconstructed, then you can actually sell it. Again, make sure you fully repaired the asset to maximize your earnings. From my observations, it would seem that the Holy Order pays the highest amount of credits for the ships I steal from them, so until now, they've been my biggest benefactors, which is why I always keep my relations neutral. I nearly forgot to say this because I didn't consider that it needed to be said. Remember those people I told you to hire aboard your courier? You know, the ones you transferred to the freighter. The captain, some engineers and the cheap crewman? You will have to appoint the cheapest crewman as the new captain of your freighter and get your skilled crew members back onto your courier. Then you can proceed with selling the ship. As for selling the stuff you get from cargo piracy, it just depends on what you got. Inventory items can be sold to station traders, while actual trade goods have to be sold to a station that buys them. But I personally don't bother with cargo piracy. When I want to blow stuff up, I just go into a Xenon system and collect these programmable field arrays, which sell for 150,000 apiece. You can also use this item to craft the Singularity Engine Time Accelerator, but I can't find the other required components. One final thing you could do that counts as piracy is hacking a station's storage module and getting it to eject its cargo, which you then collect in a ship with a big inventory. But doing so will permanently make that station and its ships enemies and your big cargo ship can get blown up and you'll lose everything, so I won't expand on this subject any further. Do this at your own risk. But anyway, we're pretty much done here. I have to admit, it took me a while to figure out how stuff works, but once I did, I reverted back to my old habits from the previous X Games, capturing ships. It may not be the most profitable venture, but it made me more than 30 million so far, and I can use this money to buy more ships and equipment to expand my piracy operations, or I can invest this money into purchasing a fleet of ships and stations which can create an economic empire. The X Universe is your oyster, and its simulated economy is by far the best feature of this game. Which is why it's kind of a waste to only limit yourself to piracy. So who knows, maybe once I figure out the trading system, I could make a similar guide for that as well. But for now, we're done. I can share no more useful information. So I will have to thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time. Goodbye.